Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Patrick Vu. It's a privilege to be able to be here uh, with uh, Knox Midland community and beyond. Uh, and uh, this morning, I'm going to share with you about how peace is a verb. But before we do that, I'm going to invite you to join with me. Would you bow and let's pray. God, thank you that you speak into our lives, that you want to connect with us on a personal level, at a community level, and even at a global level. And I pray that we would have our ears opened up so that we would just be responsive and attentive and understanding of what it is you want us to, uh, to take in and to bring to life. Uh, Lord God, I pray that you would guide us by your Holy Spirit and I ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. It's kind of weird to be talking about peace in a time like this. I think that uh, if anything, many of us are experiencing unsettledness, you know, unsettledness uh, about what's happening in the current state of the pandemic, what's uh, unsettledness about what the new normal will look like, unsettledness about hashtag me too, hashtag black lives matter, hashtag defund the police. You know, all, there's so many things right now that can work up our anxiety. And in fact, I think that there are increasing numbers of people who are reporting uh, mental health issues, mental stress, uh, because this whole period where we've experienced physical distancing from one another um, has, has broken up what we know as normal in our lives, our daily or regular routines. And it's kind of, it's kind of shaken us, right? It's taken us out of our comfortable places and familiar routines. And I, and I get it. Uh, now, you know, maybe it doesn't affect me in the same way because I'm a rabid introvert. The biggest issue I have is people crowding in on my space and stealing my Wi-Fi. Come on, people. But, you know, I, I get it right? because there's so many of us who are really just trying to figure out how do we navigate through these times and have some sense of stillness, some sense of calm. Right? God is the source of peace. That's the good news today. God is the source of peace, and he wants us to experience it and to participate in it. And sometimes that's all we want is, is, is we want to find you know, a place like this where we, where we have a little bit of tranquility. What I want to share with you today is that peace is not cheap. And, I, and when I say that, I, I, I mean... God doesn't want us to have a cheap peace. He doesn't want us to have a, a pays your money, takes your chances, dollar store variety kind of peace. The kind of peace that God wants to bring into our lives, the kind of peace that is sort of God's intention for fullness in our lives, that kind of peace is a verb. So this morning we're carrying on uh, with this series, uh, message series that we're doing here at Knox Midland. This is week number three on the fruit of the spirit. And if you saw a couple weeks back when uh, Pastor Alton kicked off uh, this series, that, that he said that this is all about shoring up our faith, shoring up our lives so that, so that we're healthier, more, more vital, instead of deteriorating or, or stagnating. Right, that we're getting stronger. And the fruit of the Spirit, this, is, this comes from a passage uh, of the Bible written by a man named Paul. Paul the Apostle, as he wrote to a group of faith-believing people in a city called Galatia. So it's, it's, it's from Galatians chapter 5. And he, he describes how many people live in this kind of angry, selfish, self-indulgent, destructive lifestyle. And he says, in comparison to that, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And the thing that has struck me about this particular part of the Bible is that when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, it's fruit in a singular tense. I, it, it's not the fruits of the Spirit, it's the fruit. Like, this is a package deal. When, when God's Spirit becomes alive in us, it is all or nothing. It, it, it gets fully embedded in us. And what we're trying to do in this series is, is look at the different facets and kind of not break them apart, but just identify what does it look like 
when they materialize in our lives, what does love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control look like in our lives? And so zooming in on peace today, you know, we might want to fall into that category of people and think that peace means ease of living, right? Just that sense of, ah, everything's good, everything's okay. But really, again, I, as I said, God's not interested in us having a cheap kind of peace. God gives us peace that is of a different variety, of a completely different kind. Jesus said these words in uh, uh, John chapter 14. He said, I'm telling you this while I'm still with you. But when the Father sends the spirit of holiness, the one who, uh, the one like me who sets you free, he will teach you all things in my name. And he will inspire you to remember every word that I've told you. I, live, I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace. Not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. You know, I, and so Jesus is giving us something that is of a completely different kind. Right? It, 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 he's ushering in like this, this complete paradigm shift, a, a new world order. And I know, I know this sounds really esoteric and kind of airy, fairy, idealistic, but I mean, look at me. What did you expect a guy like me to say? Right? I mean, but, but this, is, this is what Jesus is about. He is about turning things on its head and trying to transform the way that we not only see the world, but experience life in all of its totality. This is, this is another passage of scripture that um, Paul, again, the apostle wrote, uh, but this time it's uh, from a letter called Ephesians. So Ephesians chapter two, and he said this, our reconciling peace is Jesus. He has made Jew and non-Jew one in Christ. By dying as our sacrifice, he has broken down every wall of prejudice that separated us and has made, now made us equal through our union with Christ. Ethnic hatred has been dissolved by the crucifixion of his precious body on the cross. The legal code that stood condemning every one of us has now been repealed by his command. His triune or three-in-one Godfather spirit essence has made peace between us by starting over, forming one new race of humanity, Jews and non-Jews fused together, Two have now become one, and we live restored to God and reconciled in the body of Christ. Through his crucifixion, hatred died. For the Messiah has come to preach the sweet message of peace to you, the ones who are distant and to the ones who are near. And now, because we are united to Christ, we both have equal and direct access to the realm or in the realm of the Holy Spirit to come before the Father. This, this is world-changing stuff. Jesus was interested in reconciling all things. I mean, we often think of peace as, again, so just sort of, uh, oh, I don't know, you know, again, that, that, that quiet spot that we can escape to, or maybe that, that, that inner stillness, or maybe even just like when sides are at war or at conflict that they cease fighting. But Jesus said, you know what? Peace is transformational. It turns everything around. And it, it, he's interested in bringing things together. I, I, I would just want to share with you like, that in this particular passage, as Paul's writing, Paul writes in the Greek. Uh, that was his language, his native tongue. Um, and so peace is the word erene. And I don't know if you're watching on your phone, you're watching on tablet, on TV somewhere. I just want you, wherever you are, through your mask or however, say the word Irene with me. Ready? One, two, three, Irene. And yes, that felt weird, but anybody who's around you is looking at the guy on the screen thinking, that's weird, they're not paying attention to you. So Irene, right? It, it means bringing back together things that were once separated, right? And, and so Jesus is, is seeing things come back together. And Jesus himself, he was a Jew. 
And so in his, sort of, his dialect and his worldview and his understanding, he would have uh, thought in Hebrew, and the Hebrew word for peace is the word shalom. Okay, so try this again at home. Ready? One, two, three. Shalom. Shalom. That means wholeness. It carries that context of, of, of things being reintegrated. So same vibe as Irene. Irene, Shalom, it's about things being brought back together. And that's what Jesus accomplished, right? He brought, ultimately, us back to God because we've been separated from God, from God's love, from God's beautiful designs for our lives because of sin, because we chose our way over his way. And Jesus reintegrated us to the Father. But Jesus' uh, his mission and, and what he achieved on the cross, it has, has cosmic implications. Uh, he was interested in reconciling all things back to God. I mean, he, he wanted to purge the systems of, of war and of injustice and discrimination. You know, and, and as we think about wholeness in that sense, shalom. I mean, we ask ourselves, what, what does wholeness, what does rest, what does peace look like for our governments, for our economies, for civil liberties, for um, our, our education systems? Right? What does peace look like across the board? I want you to think about this. Um, the world roughly has about 7 billion people. Uh, 35 million of which live in Canada, uh, this great nation of ours. But, but if you think, again, on the, the global landscape, right, there are 1 billion people who do, do not have access to clean drinking water. And sadly, that is true even in our own country. You know, there are 2.6 billion people who do not have adequate sanitation. 2 billion have no electricity. 1 billion can't read or sign their name. And roughly, 20% of the world consumes 86% of the world's resources. And people, this is not shalom. This is not wholeness. This is not integrity. This is not peace the way that God dreamed of it for us. In his book, uh, Jesus Wants to Save Christians, uh, Rob Bell wrote this. He said, he said, Jesus wants to save us from making the good news about another world and not this one. Jesus wants to save us from preaching a gospel that is only about individuals and not about the systems that enslave them. Jesus wants to save us from shrinking the gospel down to a transaction about the removal of sin and not about every single particle of creation being reconciled to its maker. That's the scope of what Jesus was about. You know, this is my father's world. And God loved it so much that he sent his son. And we think that, 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 that that's about us, but, but it's, it's about everyone, all of humanity. I mean, Paul, when he wrote in the Ephesians, that passage that we looked at, he said he was, he was kind of focusing in on two specific groups, Jews and non-Jews or Gentiles, and, and how they were kind of in, in this wrestling match of, of, of who's, who's a higher class citizen in God's kingdom. And, and, and Paul was just trying to set the record straight, saying, you know what? Don't argue about that because Jesus has made us all one humanity, one common unity, one community in God. But he was about seeing everything reintegrated to God. And, that, and that's going to change the way that we think. It's gonna, it kind of forces us to reframe how we see the world. Uh, our oldest daughter uh, is studying uh, right now in the, the uh, Vancouver Film School. She's a writer. And she was telling us about this project. We were out on a walk one night. And she was telling us about this project she's doing. It's uh, to write a pilot for a TV series. And she kind of pitched it to us. And the pilot was about this group of characters whose lives are just rocked by uh, the, the state of the environment. And I was trying to feed her some ideas and trying to get her to embellish it by, uh, because I thought in my head, you know, and I said this to her, I'm just not sure that's going to capture people's imaginations, you know, the, the environmental crisis. And her response to me was, for people my age, it totally will be. I mean, she stopped 
that short of saying, okay, boomer, you know, but only because I'm not that age group. But, 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 but you get the point, right? Like somehow, I, I get it. I, I understand how, how messed up the environment is and how things need to change. But, but at some level, it doesn't resonate at, at so deeply or with such a sense of desperation or such a, uh, a, a sense of urgency as it does for her or for Greta Thunberg or I mean for her entire generation. That for them, peace means making the environment better. Peace maybe means uh, you know, promoting stronger anti-racist uh, values. Peace may mean restructuring what policing looks like. There, there are so many ways in which the world is changing on us. But Jesus has said, we are to be courageous. And I, th I think that, that, that when he said that, my peace I leave with you, and he says, so be courageous at the end of that. It's because sometimes we think peace means just finding shelter and hunkering down in the storm. And maybe Jesus means peace is having that filling of his spirit and knowing that you should go charging out into the storm. Now, I get it. I, 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 all of us want some sense of peace, right? So, so you say, like, what's in this for me? How do I get peace? And as it is with Jesus so often, it's not either or, it's both and. You know, Jesus does promise each of us peace that passes understanding, that goes beyond what we conceive of or, or even what we anticipated. You know, that he wants us to know that, that even though people may have rejected us, people may have betrayed us, that, that God is the one who says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Maybe people have, 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 have written you off and dumped you by the wayside and, and God says, no, you are cherished you're loved you're unique you are special and i will keep you and, may, and maybe you're tormented by things in your past maybe you are uh you were wrecked because they're they're destructive habits that try to claw their way back into your life and and jesus says you know what you have a heavenly father that no matter how far you wander where you go if you turn to come back to him he will come flying down the driveway with his arms spread wide open. This is the God that Jesus brings to us, that he reintegrates us with, his heavenly father, our heavenly father. And we're called, we're called to live in that light. And I, I, I know that sometimes people think, well, you know, if God, if God wants all that, he could, he could just like do this kind of Thanos snap of the fingers, you know, infinity gauntlet deal and make everything better. But, but, but again, peace is not cheap. It cost God everything. It cost him the life of his son, Jesus. Right? And he said, by, by having his son, Jesus, go to the cross, he said, I'm willing to do the dirty work. I'm willing for this to get hard and I'm willing to be in it for the long haul. And he is in for the long haul. He, he paints this picture of what peace will look like at the end of days when, when history kind of closes its final chapter. He says there'll be a place where there'll be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. Every tear is wiped away. God says that peace is coming. You long for that. I long for that. And he says, I've got that covered. You leave that to me. But peace for now Peace for today, peace is a verb. He wants us to be filled with his spirit, with his, his, his joy and his, his love and his redemption. And then to go and live differently because of it. Right? If, if, if we experience the, the, just kind of that eye-opening, life-opening uh, filling of the Holy Spirit because we come to Jesus. That's going to change us. If we understand what it is for, for the gaps to be bridged, 
for our sins to be taken care of, we begin to see the world in a different way. And we, I hope, understand that we can leap into the breach and make a difference. I mean, it doesn't take long to look around the world and to, and to see just the brokenness that is around us, the, the systems that are corrupted. So I don't, I don't know what it looks like for you. You know what, maybe, uh, maybe for you, you become a social media influencer or champion. Or maybe you are going to pick up a sign and you are going to march out and protest. Or maybe you are going to roll up your sleeves and get to the local food bank and help out. Or you're going to put on that face shield and you're going to go into the long-term care facility. Whatever that looks like, Jesus says, you're filled with my spirit. Go and do that and be courageous. Not in a, uh, an angry, aggressive, violent, ill will kind of way. Because again, the fruit of the spirit, it's a package deal, right? So if we're going to live this way, if we're going to live out peace, if we're going to try to bring about peace in our world, we've got to do it with love in a way that, that, that spreads joy uh, and that demonstrates patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, all of these things. But if you're willing to be a person of peace, if you're willing to integrate into your life this idea that peace is a verb, I'm convinced that, that God will fill you with his shalom and that he will make you a vessel of his peace wherever you go. Would you bow with me? Let's pray. Lord God, your uh, love spills in and through our lives. You want to make us not only people who are marked by peace, inside, but who are peacemakers in the communities and the, the lives that we can touch and in the world that, where we have uh, an influence. And I pray that you would, uh, first off, help us to know what it is to receive that peace through Jesus and then to understand when that spirit of Jesus is alive in us, that transformation is happening that transformation flows out from us. That God, you have made us an agent of the reconciliation of the world. Thank you for your love. Thank you for this mission. Thank you, God, that you are relentless in your love, your passion for all of humanity. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.